So, so far, all we've talked about is pulling out a GCA. Okay, pull out your greatest common factor. So now we're going to look specifically at what does it look like when we factor something with four terms. Okay, so basically I'm teaching you step two. Alright, so what I want you guys to kind of remember and think about, okay, so if we look at this warm-up problem from earlier today, right, this is the problem I used to give you. In the last chapter test, I gave you this, right, and you would distribute it through and get to this answer, right? Okay, that's what was going on. And remember, we talked about we're, be, we're working backwards. So I'm going to give you the answer now, and you're coming up kind of what the problem should have been. Okay? It's still going to be the same thing. So if I gave you a problem like this on the last test, what would you guys do? Distribute, Distribute foil, however you think of it, right? So we would take this and get here, and we have 6x squared plus 4x minus 3x and then minus 2, right? And then what would you guys tell me the next step would be? Combine my terms, very good. So 4 minus 3 would be 1x, okay? So you would get 6x squared plus x minus 2. So what I'm teaching you right now is when we're at this step right here, how do we break that down? And then when we come back from break, I'm going to teach you, okay, now we're going to put the middle together and how do we break that down? Okay, so we're kind of just baby stepping through it here a little bit. Thank you. Okay, so does anybody have kind of a question about that? So in reality, what we're going to start doing today is we are going to start unfoiling. So you foil, and now we're going to start undoing it. We're going backwards, okay? So again, I'm going to teach you how we get to here, all right? And then after break, we're going to work on how we get all the way to here, all right? So baby steps, one step at a time. So... First thing you're always going to look for when we're, when we're uh, factoring, okay, is a GCF. There will not always be a GCF any longer, but you look for it first. That's going to be step one. You're going to get so tired of me saying, did you look for a GCF? Because that's the one step. You know it now, but then you all forget by test time. You forget to look for GCFs, and you just try to do all the other things I taught you, okay? So step one, GCF. So if I'm looking through here, 4, 14, 6, 21. Is there a number that they all have in common other than a 1? No. Okay? So there's no GCF, so we don't have to worry about that. No GCF. Okay? So then our next step, in fact, we'll go up here, up here on bullet point. First thing we're going to look for, look for GCF. Okay? That's going to be our first step. Look for GCF. Okay? So we have looked for a GCF here. We know there is not one, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to break this into two smaller parts. We're going to group, what we call group. We're going to put parentheses around the 4x squared plus 14x, and we're going to put parentheses around the 6x 20 plus 21, okay? Now that we've grouped, now we're going to look for GCFs again in each little grouping, okay? So if I look at this guy, what would be a GCF on this guy right here? Two x. x, right? Two and an x. They have a two in common, and if we have x squared x, you pull the smallest x, right? So we're going to pull out a two x. All right. Now, what do you think we have left over when we do that in that first grouping? What do we get there? Two x plus seven. Very good. Good job. Okay. All right, now we're going to do the same thing on the second guy. So on the second guy here, we've got 6x plus 21. Trace. 3, very good. So we're going to pull out a 3. And what do we have left over on the inside? 2x plus 7. Okay, now, what do you guys notice about the highlighted stuff on the screen there? They're the same. They're the same. If they are not the same, you have messed up. All right, you've done it wrong, because they will always match if you do it correctly. Okay, so let's go back up here and let's kind of put in our next step here. So we're going to look for GCF. If there's no GCF, we're going to group. Then we're going to pull GCF from each grouping. Okay, and side note here, inside should match. Inside should match. Okay, so pull GCF from each grouping. Inside should match. 
All right, so then our last step, we're going to go ahead and write our last step down. We're going to rewrite. Okay, we're going to rewrite it. Okay, so when I say rewrite, you are going to put together these outside numbers that you have. So we're going to put together the 2x and the 3. Okay, so we're going to have 2x plus 3. We're going to put them together in one set of parentheses. And then we're just going to drop down one of the two green parts. Okay, we already know they match. They're the same thing. So we're just going to write one of them down. And that's how we get to the problem that we would FOIL out if we needed to. All right, so could you FOIL this to make sure you got back to here? Yeah, you can FOIL every single answer on your test to make sure you get it right. All right, so if you take time to FOIL this back out, it should take you back to this step right here. Okay, so remember, we're undoing the FOIL process. Okay, all right, so let's go walk through the steps again, okay? Okay, first off, is there a GCF between all four parts here? No. No, twos and sevens, X, Ys, no, nothing. There's just nothing here. So then what was our next step? Group. group. Okay, so we're going to group it. Now keep that negative in the middle with the 2y, okay? Keep that negative with that negative 2y there. Okay, first grouping. What can we pull out of the first grouping here? What's your GCF? X. Good, Marcella. That's right. So we're going to pull out an x because they both have an x in common. That's what they have in common. And we're going to have a 2y left and a 7 left. Okay. Second grouping. What can we pull there? A what? A negative what? Negative 1. Okay. Now, the reason I really have to pull negative 1 is, is remember their insides have to match, right? If I don't pull anything but just a 1 out, my signs won't match up. Okay? So we're going to pull out a negative 1 just to flip the signs over and get 2y plus 7. And the reason we're doing that is so the insides will match. Okay, the insides have to match. Even if you've got to change signs or do whatever, they've got to match. Okay, so now our last step is to rewrite it. So what do we think this answer is going to look like when we rewrite it? Darlin? Maybe x minus 1 minus 2y plus 7. Very good. Nice job. Okay, again, you're going to put together the outsides, right? The x and the minus 1. So put those together, and then just drop down one of the 2y plus 7s. Okay? Yep. Okay, I want you to go ahead and start working through number 3 on your own. Just see what you can come up with.